Hi, this is Jody Wistanoff, and you are watching Wink Sound. The way that I use the multiband dynamic plugin in Ableton for this Beat Elite template is basically it's just like a really quick way of splitting up the drum bus into basically like the lows, mids, and highs. And I've basically just done it so that I can apply effects to the highs of the drum bus. Okay, that's a pretty standard just with a limiter, but it's just really is a way to get glistening reverb on the highs, just the hi hats and the sort of tops of the snare and stuff like that. Hi, my name is Makai with BeatElite.com. I am going to show you how to use multiband dynamics to split frequencies and then process individual frequencies very creatively. I have soloed the drum track from Jody's template. Now I'm going to show you how he got this sound by using a audio effect rack over the entire group. Now obviously there's a lot of processing that went into the drum section, but in this case he did something very interesting with the frequencies. And I'll show you what that is. So if I go ahead and open these individual chains within an audio effect rack that Jody used, you can see he has one called low, one called mid, one called high. Each channel he uses a multi-band dynamics processor and he essentially solos the band he wants. So in the case of the lows, he solos the lows. In the case of the mids, he solos the mids. And in the case of the highs, he solos the highs. Now he does something very different on the high end. He adds a reverb unit. The reason why he does this is because he wants to give the high end a little bit of reverb treatment without affecting the rest of the drum track. Now the reason why you'd want to do that is because you would not want a lot of reverb on your low end because that can quickly muddy up a mix. So he uses splitting frequencies to affect one individual part of the frequency as he sees fit. Let's go ahead and replicate this and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to turn this off, show you how to do this from scratch. Take an audio effect rack, let's put it before the limiter, I'm going to open up the chains and we go to multiband dynamics. I'm gonna drop one of these bad boys in. Call this lows. And I'm going to solo the low end. Go into mids. Do the same thing, except I'm gonna solo the mids. I'm gonna drop one more, call this highs. Solo the highs. Let's see what this sounds like as is. And let's go ahead and mute this and play his. Okay, you can definitely hear a difference. His highs are clean, they're crisp, they're bright. The lows sound a little deeper. And what's interesting about this is that he has not processed the lows any differently than we have in our rack. And I'll show you what I mean. If we go to the low end, look at the low, he has the default setting on this. No real attenuation, threshold is the same, everything is the same. Let's go turn ours on. Look at ours, exact same processing. Now, how does he get this different variation in sound? If we listen to it again. And that's easy. What he's doing is he's bringing down the mid-range. So if I bring down my mid-range, okay. the other thing that he did on the high band is he added a reverb. And this isn't a dramatic reverb, but he just gives a little bit of space. And I'll show you what this sounds like here. very subtle. In fact, what it really does is it almost smooths out the highs. It doesn't make them as harsh or as sharp. To do this, all you would do, since everything is split using the chain function in the audio effect rack, I'm just going to go ahead and go down to the, to the reverb. Let's pick just a room reverb, something with just a very short decay. And I'm going to select the highs. I'm going to scroll over here and just drop this right inside of the rack, right after the multiband dynamics section. And then we have our reverb unit. We'll go ahead and unactivate his and then activate ours. You can hear right away, it's a little bit tinny, <laughs> a little bit reverby. We don't want that much, and that's because the wet is really high. So let's bring that down. Now you can really play around with these. I mean, you could go crazy if you wanted to. If you would like to learn more and also download Jody's template and see how he put together a track, you can do that at BeatElite.com. Join the conversation by following Wink Sound on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to keep up with everything you need to know about music and audio technology.